In the last half of the 19th century, no one dominated life in Faribault quite like Bishop Henry Whipple. He grew up in New York State and, encouraged by his wife Cornelia, decided to enter the Episcopal ministry. He quickly gained a reputation as a dynamic leader following his work among the poor on Chicago's South Side. In 1859, without his knowledge, the Episcopal Diocese of Minnesota elected him to serve as its first bishop. Whipple traveled across the state, searching for a permanent home before coming to this city. He later wrote, Forty gentlemen called at the mission, and in the name of the citizens of Faribault offered me a home. They also promised to aid me according to their ability in founding schools. Their concern touched my heart. He accepted their offer, and this city became the center for the Episcopal Church in Minnesota. With the encouragement of the Reverend James Breck, Whipple decided to build a cathedral here the first structure built to be a cathedral in the American Episcopal Church. Whipple persuaded one of the nation's finest architectural firms, Renwick & Company, to assist with the building's design. James Renwick helped to popularize the Gothic revival style in America and is best known as the architect of St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City and the Smithsonian Building in Washington, D.C., At its cornerstone-laying service, Whipple spoke hopefully to the gathered crowd. When it is done, I trust that every nail, stone, and timber shall be some man's offering of love. But it would take seven years to complete the building, and in the intervening years, America was plunged into a civil war, while in Minnesota, a bloody conflict erupted in August 1862 between the Dakota Indians and the new settlers. Whipple is best known for his work among the Dakota and Ojibwe Indians, from whom he received the name Straight Tongue because of his honesty. At the close of the U.S.-Dakota War, after more than 300 Dakota had received a death sentence, Whipple directly appealed to Abraham Lincoln for mercy. The bishop wrote, Who is guilty of the causes which desolated our border? I believe that God will hold the nation guilty. In the end, the president pardoned 265, but sent 38 to the gallows in Mankato, still the largest mass execution in American history. Whipple's stand made him one of the most unpopular men in the state, and he was targeted with death threats. In his hometown of Faribault, the struggle to raise money for the cathedral dragged on for years, and eventually the planned tower was eliminated. Finally, in May of 1869, the cathedral was completed, its walls erected by local stonemasons and paid for by contributions from the citizens of Faribault, but also with the help of Bishop Whipple's friends in the East. In August 1874, it almost became the place of Whipple's death, One Sunday evening, with the bishop sitting in his chair in the chancel, a demented divinity school student by the name of George Nims calmly strode down the aisle, pulling out a pistol. Waving it around, he suddenly turned and pointed it directly at the bishop. The congregation froze as the would-be assassin cocked his gun. Everyone, that is, except Whipple, who jumped forward and grabbed the man's arm, After Nims was disarmed, the cool-headed bishop insisted that the service continue, and the organist struck up a hymn while the student was removed. In 1902, after Whipple's death, the congregation decided to honor the beloved bishop by completing the tower on the cathedral. Working from plans produced by another of America's greatest architectural firms, Cram, Goodhue, and Ferguson of Boston, One year later, these same architects received a commission to design a series of new buildings for the United States Military Academy at West Point. Their work here was a classic, square, Gothic revival tower with ten bells cast by the McShane Foundry from Maryland. A memorial tablet at its base reads, This tower is the thanksgiving of many people for Henry Benjamin Whipple, first bishop of Minnesota, and is the symbol before men 
of the supreme value of a righteous man. If you step inside, you'll see a series of beautiful stained glass windows, including two donated by Native Americans. Indian children gathered and sold berries to raise the funds to install the Lamb of God window, and one can only wonder how many gallons of berries it took to earn the needed $125. Over the course of his life in Faribault, Bishop Whipple would leave his adopted city with a rich legacy, including Shattuck and St. Mary's schools, as well as Seabury Divinity School. But none was dearer to his heart than this cathedral. <laughs>